No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I'm very thankful to be here with all of you today. And as we continue to add and try new things, as we worship together, Anne H. and I will be sharing the scriptures and prayers and more. One of the more is trying to do a responsive call to worship. I've added the, uh, the words, you'll see them on the screen. However, it's gonna only be my voice doing both parts. So if you end up doing both parts also, that's okay. God always hears our words that we cry out to him. We continue to explore the theme, part of the matter, through scripture, prayer, meditation, and how it matters in our day-to-day -day lives. If you want, you're welcome to add to our thread, with, that's the one that has the link for today's worship, a picture or perhaps a thought or a quote that has come up for you in this topic. Some people have started to see hearts in many different places, some physical, some might be stories that touch your heart. And then next week is the first Sunday of the month, and we'll be sharing communion together online. So please bring something to eat and drink as we celebrate the sacred meal on Sunday, May 3rd. And now please join me in the call to worship. God of our starting points and of our destinations. As our individual journeys bring us to this common and uncommon sacred space, we offer gratitude for an undying force that pulls us together. For a continuing call to creative community and for familiar roads that still have the power to surprise us. Migrate with us into new places Move with us and teach us brand new moves. Lift our spirits and ground our nervous humming. Invite us back to paths from which we've wandered and nudge us toward paths we've never imagined. Let us continue in worship together. <laughs>
pray with me. Loving God, your son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, on to the sharing with the young at heart. Today will be another meditation, and I invite you to have your heart stone and candle ready for use during this meditation. And to settle back and be comfortable. Let us take a breath and let go of anything in our way of being present in this time and place. Breathe in and out at your own speed, at your own pace. Take your heart stone or perhaps you still consider it your worry stone, and take a good look at it. See the crevices if there's any, maybe there's a split, maybe there's more than one color, and maybe in some cases, if you hold it up to the light, it shimmers. Let it remind you that as real as this stone is, so is the love that God has for us. And as you continue to consider this stone, I invite you to continue to breathe in and out at your own pace. Take your candle and take a good look at it, whether it's a faux one like the one I have, perhaps it's one that you're going to light with the match or something. Take a look at it. They're all different. And as real as the light from your candle will be, let it remind us all that God's light is that real. And now, into your care we offer our worries, fears, and strife. We turn to you and know you're near, your light, our love, and life. Let us light our candles now and set our heart stones next to it. And let us take time in this upcoming week to remember how real God's love is for each of us.
Let us take a moment and sit in silent prayer with God who sits and talks with us. It can be difficult in this moment not to be near some of the people we love and might be worried about. We continue to say the names in the bulletin of those we hold in our hearts and give them to God. And then we take a moment and say out loud the names of the people you wish were there next to you right now. Name them out loud. They are present with us in our hearts. And if you don't have a bulletin, I'm sure you have people that you would love to pray for. Let us sit in the silence. God, we continue to pray and lift to you our country and its leaders, our church, the Savior Congregational United Church of Christ, the members of our armed forces, firefighters, EMTs, those engaged in law enforcement, and people affected by war, hurricanes, and other disasters, those who persevere to provide essential services for us all, and for the healthcare workers and medical staff on the front lines in this fight against COVID-19 and other diseases and other illnesses. The people of the world who have contracted COVID-19, those who have lost the fight, their families and friends, and all who are feeling isolated through this time. We take a breath, God, and we pray the prayer Jesus taught his followers so many years ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. gifts to you and ask a blessing on them. We ask you for your inspiration on how to use our gifts. And we ask this out of the love in our hearts. A reading from Psalm 116 verses 1 through 4. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, save my life. Here is how the story of Jesus' surprise visit on the road goes. Imagine on a tragic and sad day, you are walking down the road and a stranger comes along. On that same day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about everything that had happened. And while they're discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their journey. They were prevented from recognizing him. He said to them, what are you talking about as you walk along? They stopped, their faces downcast. Then the one named Cleopas replied, 
Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who is unaware of the things that have taken place there over the last few days? He said to them, what things? They said to him, the things about Jesus of Nazareth. Because of his powerful deeds and words, he was recognized by God and all the people as a prophet. But our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the one who would redeem Israel. All these things happened three days ago. But there's more. Some women from our group have left us stunned. They went to the tomb early this morning and didn't find the body. They came to us saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who told them he is alive. Some of us who were with us, some of those who were with us, went to the tomb and found things just as the women said. They didn't see him. Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people, your dull minds keep you from believing all that the prophets talked about. Wasn't it necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then he interpreted for them the things written about himself in all the scriptures, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets. When they had come to Emmaus, he acted as though he was going on ahead. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us. It is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. After he took his seat at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, Weren't our hearts on fire when he spoke to us along the road and when he explained the scriptures for us? They got up right then and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying to each other, the Lord really has risen. He appeared to Simon. And then the two disciples described what had happened along the road and how Jesus was made known to them as he broke the bread. May God bless the hearing and the listening to the sacred text. This is a story of a journey, a journey of grief and ultimately the return of hope. What a difference a day can make. That morning, Two of Jesus' followers were making their way to a little village called Emmaus. Their hearts had broken. They were grieving and had lost all hope. The week before, it started with joy. Jesus led them in a parade of sorts into the city of Jerusalem. He then confronted those who were making a mockery of God's temple. He drove the sellers of second-rate sacrifices out of the temple and made quite a scene. And the week before that, he had raised his friend and follower, Lazarus, from the grave. Thursday, it started great. He shared a meal with his followers. And then after that, it all went so wrong. The soldiers came and took Jesus away. He was tortured and executed. For the followers of Jesus, their lives were in turmoil. Some were hiding out of fear that they could be next. Others, the women and Mary, had made their way to his grave that was in a garden to minister to him in death. It was there the women were visited by angels and told of Jesus' resurrection. And then Mary saw who she thought was a gardener. Where did you move my Lord's body? Take me there so I can sit with him. For Mary, when Jesus said her name, her eyes were open to recognizing him. Her heart was melted. But for our two on the way to Emmaus, even these stories didn't open their eyes. They were hurt and they were grieving. Have you ever been so upset that you couldn't think straight, that you could barely remember your own name? Perhaps it's kind of a silly question with everything everyone's going through. Well, that is where these two were. 
They were doing their best to get away from the violence and horror that they had witnessed. And right now in the time we are living through, we too are suffering. We're grieving loss in many ways, the changes to our lives, how we interact and how we try to be present with each other. We're also facing our own roads to Emmaus. And like Cleopas and his companion, we can be joined on our journey. Because suddenly for these two, a man appealed on the road with them. He noticed they were sad and having an in-depth discussion. So when the man asked them, what could they possibly be talking about? Everything, their doubts, loss of hope and grieving came spilling out. The words just tumbled over each other. And in the hospital stores and homes that we go into, this is a reality, reality for each of us. And at some point, we also might cry out in desperation, like Cleopas. How the heck could you not know, he cried. Are you the only one in Jerusalem who hadn't heard what happened? Jesus of Nazareth, our teacher, friend, and a prophet, he's been killed. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. These words are telling with Jesus' death, their hope was lost. Cleopas still didn't recognize Jesus at this point. He just kept spilling out his feelings. And then these women came and told us how Jesus' tomb was empty. And can you imagine they expected us to believe they saw angels angels that Jesus rose and to top it off Mary came and she said Jesus met her in the garden well can't believe that at this point the man interrupts you don't get it do you this was what the prophet said would happen and he told them stories starting with Moses and working his way up to the events of the last week to quote Brian McLaren, who I believe said it well, God's word doesn't come in dominating, crushing force. It comes only in vulnerability, in weakness, in gentleness. And yet, they still didn't recognize him. Even as their hearts were burning, they didn't recognize Jesus in those words. In the scripture, it says, their eyes were kept from recognizing him. All the fears, doubts, and sadness got in their way of realizing who they were sharing their journey. But then they came to what they thought was the end of the travels. They arrived in Emmaus. Jesus went on as to continue, and they talked him into staying. And as Jesus broke the bread, and in that sharing of a meal with him, their eyes were suddenly open. Everything changed. Jesus disappeared and they were left together in awe. Now their story had changed from one of sadness and hopelessness to one of hope. And instead of wanting to be alone and away from others, they rushed out of their house, made their way back to the others that were followers of Jesus. They proclaimed, didn't our hearts burn within us? They rushed out into the night to announce the light of God's hope. We all have our roads to Emmaus. Those times we wonder and feel at the end of our ropes. So mired in hopelessness, we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. But what a difference a day can make. We can also have our eyes opened. Mary heard Jesus' voice. Her eyes were opened. The two on the road to Emmaus, eyes were open when Jesus broke bread with them. And like the times during Jesus' ministry on earth, he spent a lot of time sharing time and meals with others. Others that the world thought were unworthy. And it was also the time Jesus invited people to open up and share straight from the heart getting right to the heart of the matter. As we gather, we remember that at the core, 
Jesus's message was unconditional love to offer ourselves straight from the heart is the seed that Jesus planted in us. And this is the growth that we must continue to nurture. And we also continue to live and share our lives. We, like Cleopas and his companion, we can head back to Jerusalem, to our lives, sharing the good news. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Not just on Easter Sunday, but all the time. That through all that is happening, God is alongside of us on our journey. Let us pray. Ever present God, who by the power of the Holy Spirit transforms us. Confront us here amid of our doubts. Grant us your peace while we face our fears. Increase our trust that we may embrace life in all of its fullness. Speak to us now the word that we need to hear, empowering us to rest in your power and your love. Amen.
be witnesses of these things you have heard. Attend to your heart, worship with integrity, trust in God. And as God has given love straight from the heart, so we this week seek to give that love to others. Amen. Please join me in the congregational response. God be with you till we meet again. Loving counsels guide, uphold you. With a shepherd's care enfold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet, till we meet. God be with you till we meet again. Thank you.